Hi, Andrew here. Today we're going to take a look at some more 300 AAC. In particular, Gorilla's 110 grain controlled chaos load. Bullets manufactured by Lehigh, the ammunition is manufactured by Gorilla. And before we get started, I want to thank ARFCOM member Subi Scott for sending me the ammunition to use in this test. So, 110 grain controlled chaos. Well, we saw with the 223 version that this did pretty well despite Lehigh's reputation as making some kind of gimmicky stuff from time to time. The 223 controlled chaos fragmented, made a big TSC. It worked the way it was designed and actually produced wounding that looked very similar to a Mark 318. Will we see the same performance reproduced here in 300 AAC? Based on the way the 223 controlled chaos performed, I think it might do pretty well. Let's get out to the range and find out. All right, guys, you know I'm not super fond of Lehigh. So if I say nice things about them, it's because I mean it. This is it's pretty impressive. Really short neck at about one inch. Nice, big, long, temporary stretch cavity at eight inches by three and a half. Penetration is a little deep at 21.2 but I've said it many many times it's better to have more than enough penetration rather than not enough it's better to fail by going over rather than to fail by going under yes cue the stupid jokes about penetration but it's true you got to reach those vital organs if you fail to reach the vital organs you can't stop the threat more rounds are fired which endangers innocent people more than a bullet that could penetrate more deeply than you really need it to absolutely do. This is outstanding. It really is messing stuff up in here. Let's take a look at this projectile. That is pretty cool. So, not very surprising. It did what it's supposed to do. It blew off the front section of that bullet as fragments, retained the rest of that rear section. This would be a great hunting bullet. There's no lead in it to contaminate the meat. Lots of disruption. Big, huge tracks coming off of here. You can see how one of the fragments exited the block on the side here. Another one came up like this. Just absolute, well, chaos. <laughs> It's actually doing a pretty good job and performing as designed. I'm impressed. Okay, so what do we take home from this test? Well, to begin with, the temporary stretch cavity that we saw on the high-speed video was rather modest. Don't get me wrong, the fragments did stir things up real good. There was lots of disruption, just a big old mess of things in the gel block. But the high speed showed us that it didn't stretch all that far. And a big part of the reason for that is that 300 AAC just isn't moving along that fast. And temporary stretch cavity, while it, there are several factors that influence the size of temporary stretch cavity, the primary factor is velocity. So a little bit slower bullet means that we don't see the kind of temporary stretch cavity that we might from a 5.56 or 223. However, as I mentioned, the fragmentation did cause significant disruption in the gel. On yet another hand, I think we're on the third hand by now, we did see some fairly excessive penetration. Now, I've told you guys in the past my opinion on over penetration. I don't believe that it's nearly the risk that a lot of people make it out to be. That's not to say that a person couldn't be harmed if you shoot through a bad guy. It's just that, to the best of my knowledge, that's never happened. 
As long as I've been doing these videos, I've been asking people to send me one credible instance where a homeowner shot someone in justified self-defense and that round passed through a bad guy and hurt an innocent person. So far as I know, that hasn't happened. Again, it doesn't mean it can't, but I think the risks of it are not that great, especially compared to the risks of missed shots hitting innocent people. That's where your concern ought to be. So I wouldn't discount this cartridge just because it exceeds that FBI 18 inch max. However, the other performance metrics aren't great. They're not terrible, just kind of mediocre. It is certainly adequate for defensive use, but there are other loads in 300 AAC that are even better. And you should probably choose those for home defense. If you have any questions or if you think I left something out, definitely leave a comment below. I love to hear your input. If you want to make badass high speed video like you saw in this test, get in touch with Nathan Bohr at Aimed Research. He's the guy who provided the camera that I used to make the video in this test. I'll leave Aimed Research contact information in the description, along with the link back to ARFCOM where we're discussing this in the thread. Have a great day.